It's another cold day in Chicago. Got the train or the transit system running behind me and right now I'm walking through an open field in Graceland Cemetery. There's a statue here known as the Statue of Eternal Silence that has a very haunting tale to it. It has to deal with ghosts, legends, lore, and a Ouija board. You'll see what I mean. I have an idea where it's at. In fact, I can see it from right here and that's where I'm heading. First stop in this historic cemetery known as Graceland Cemetery in Chicago, Illinois. Now throughout this entire video you're going to hear that the sound of the transit going by the cemetery. But look at this. This is amazing. SK Martin. Let's go ahead and walk around so you can see the pillars on this thing. This is, this is beyond glorious. Wow. I feel like by this point, you probably already know this about me, but I love architecture and I love lines, especially when it comes to cemeteries. But look how beautiful this is. Erected in affectionate remembrance by his wife. We need something like this whenever it's our time to go. Crazy, right? Talk about waking the dead. It's funny. I'm just putting two and two together. Remember the movie, The Blues Brothers? That took place in Chicago and it was filmed here. But do you remember that scene where Jake and Elwood go back to the apartment, this tiny apartment, and it's so close to the tracks that it, it, it shakes and rattles the entire place? Well, it ain't much, but it's home. How often does a train go by? So often you won't even notice it. It's real. <laughs> I never thought it would be that, but it's, it's real. The time that we've been here, I've seen that train, or one of the trains, one of the many trains go by, I don't know, 15 times already? And there it is. The statue of eternal silence, the statue of death here in Chicago. So many different ghost stories and legends and lore of this statue. One of them being, it cannot be photographed. So I'm hoping when I go and watch this back, got a clear shot of it. Now the legend, the story that I love the most about this is it's believed by some, including myself, that the Statue of Eternal Silence is actually the inspiration for the blue ghost. The ghostly figure that you see on the, the, the box of the Ouija board. For the most part, it's the same. But the big difference is the position of the left hand here on the statue. It's underneath the cloak, but on the box for the Ouija board, it's raised. Now, I told you two stories about the Statue of Eternal Silence. The first one being rumored to be the inspiration for the blue ghost from the Ouija board, and the other one being that if you take a picture of it, it doesn't appear in the photos, or it shows up blurry like some sort of spirited image. But there are other stories, one of them being at different times, people have taken photos of this statue, and the left arm that's underneath the cloak moves at different heights throughout the day. But the one that freaks the most people out, the one that scares the most people that pretty much made this 
infamous in the ghost stories of Chicago. It's believed that if you were to stand in front of the statue and look up into its eyes, you will see how you're going to die. And you know I gotta do it. Now, one of the things that I love to do on our adventures is to tempt fate, to test out these ghost stories, these, these theories. Now, you can see how tall this thing is compared to Jessica, but you notice if I back up a little bit, you see where Jessica's standing right in front of her? That patch of grass that's been worn away? This is where people stand and look up into the eyes of the Statue of Eternal Silence. Stare into its eyes. I did, I thought they moved. You thought they moved? Now, Jessica, I was telling the viewers that people who stand in that spot and look up into the statue, into its eyes, the people see how they're going to die. It's one of the ghost stories here in Chicago. You got nothing? No. Maybe you're gonna live forever because after all, you are a vampire from Pasadena. Pasadena. Oh, no. <laughs> I have to do it as well, right? I mean, this thing is freaking beautiful. Yeah, I got nothing. I wonder if you have to like do it at a certain time of day or possibly, I don't know, stand here for a good four hours or something like that. Maybe at that point you'll start seeing things, but I still don't know how I'm going to die. I would think everybody knows this at this point, that if you come to a cemetery and you see a grave stone or something like that that's pretty unique, you should always look behind it because that's usually where you'll find some of the, the more juicy information, so to speak. Now, the Statue of Eternal Silence, it has a plaque back here. It says, erected by Henry Graves, son of Dexter Graves. So that makes it even more creepier. One of the pioneers of Chicago, Dexter Graves brought the first colony to Chicago consisting of 13 families. Uh, arriving here July 15th, I think it says 1881. Now I'm not gonna go ahead and read the rest of it. You're more than welcome to, to stop the video, pause it, read it, and then pick it right back up. But how crazy is it that this historic spooky statue is that of somebody named Dexter Graves? Now you and I both know that there are so many graves and so many interesting tombstones here in Chicago, and trust me, I want to visit them all, but don't really have much time, only here for two days. So I kind of have to pick and choose. I promise you we're going to come back at some point, especially whenever the weather's a lot nicer. But visiting the Statue of Eternal Silence, the supposed inspiration for the blue ghost of the Ouija board, I had to visit, just had to. Now for the rest of this video, we're going to go ahead and explore the rest of the cemetery. Now for the most part though, most of the notable graves are that of businessmen and politicians. But there is one grave in particular that's here uh, that's rather famous, if you will. We're going to go ahead and visit that and just kind of walk around and, and, and just take in this historic place. Now, this is a rather unique piece. The name on it is Hutchinson. Huh. Don't see something like that every day. And then almost directly to the left of it is this one over here. It looks like it's half of a mausoleum. I wonder what the story with this one is. What's it say? Crochel. I wonder if there's anything around the back of it. Well, it looks like it's missing something for sure. So I'm guessing some sort of damage, hopefully not, you know, somebody desecrating the grave. But, but look at that. Or maybe it was, I don't know, I, I can't tell. It looks like possibly, 
I can't tell. I honestly can't tell if this was a bigger tombstone and it just kind of broke apart or maybe it's supposed to look like that. Huh, strange. Over here in the middle of the trees, it's like a knight. Was that a knight templar? I don't know. Let's see what it says. Above all things, truth beareth away the victory. One of the things that I always look for in cemeteries are the statues. Sometimes you go into a cemetery and the statues aren't really there. Sometimes they, they are memorial gardens, which means the, the tombstones are flat on the ground. But occasionally, you get something as miraculous as this. Look how beautiful this is. And this little guy over here too, right? Let's, go, let's look at him head on. Yeah, that's something else. I mean, pure artistry. To me, there's nothing more beautiful than a good statue in a cemetery. And then you get those cemeteries that have tons of statues in it. Oh, wow, look at this. I just noticed that. Right there on the handle is a serpent, a snake. That is cool. Wow. Another thing you should know about us, Jessica and I, we do not, and I repeat, do not follow sports in any way. But there's one other famous, notable grave here in Graceland Cemetery that we're gonna visit. And that's this one right here. Here, let me get down. The one right there with that orange car on it, Jack Johnson, first black heavyweight champion of the world. Jack John A. Johnson, 1878 to 1946. And it looks, if you look over here, there's Etta, his wife. And then if we walk over here, just below the name, tombstone. It says Elizabeth Tina White Johnson, mother of the first black heavyweight champion of the world, John Arthur Jack Johnson. So that's neat. He's buried with his family. Again, always look at the back of the tombstones. It looks like it's got his autograph here, like inscription of his autograph. It says Jack Johnson, champion, boxer of the world. See, I'm not a fan of sports, especially boxing, but even I think that is cool. Now back in LA, a good friend of ours, David Oman, who owns the Oman House, we did a video on him. He lives right on Cielo Drive, a couple doors down from where Sharon Tate and everybody was murdered back in 1969. He is a huge Jack Johnson fan. I'm talking massive Jack Johnson fan. I can only hope that he's gonna watch this video and see this. Pretty wild, right? So much history. Look at this one over here, just to the right. I love this, the stones, the, the monuments that look like there's a casket on a pedestal. This one here even has these lion door knockers. Makes you wonder who's gonna try to knock and wake up the dead, right? It's like a tapestry, look at that, it's a blanket. Look at the detail. I just can't get over how massive a lot of these monuments are. Look at this one here. I mean, it might as well be a Coliseum, like some sort of building. Now on the other side of this, there's a lake or a pond, however you wanna call it. Baby Gold, this is something, isn't it? It's taller than me. It is taller than you. Oh. Oh, that's cool. 
It's a family plot. Yeah. <laughs> this is something else, right? I like it. It's pretty. It's big. Yeah. Oh, look, a coyote. Well, you see, I'm, there's a coyote that's been following us. I don't want to leave this place. It's pretty serene. Now, of course, there's the statue of eternal silence. And then there's Jack Johnson. And then there's this one. Probably the most beautiful final resting place I have, I have ever seen in my travels across the country. Right? It's breathtaking. If I stand back, back up quite a bit so you can take everything in. There's little toys. Beautiful. Next, we're going to visit the final resting place of Ludwig Wolf. It's with two Fs. Now this one here is a little bit different. You walk up to it and down some steps. Right? The All the leaves? <laughs> Ready? Do it. He's a little kid at heart. One of the reasons why I love her. Now here's a fun little piece of information. Years ago, whenever I first came to Chicago, one of the very first things I did was visit a cemetery. And in that cemetery, one of the very first photos I ever took in Chicago is of this statue right here. It's a faceless angel. Now, truth be told, at one point it had a face. But not anymore. It's been weathered away. And it is seriously, eerily beautiful. I mean, look at this. Eerily beautiful and at the same time, very sad. I'm a sucker for wings too. And with that being said, thank you for joining us on another grim adventure, this time to Graceland Cemetery in Chicago, Illinois. One of the most beautiful cemeteries here in Chicago, the home of the Statue of Eternal Silence, the inspiration, the supposed inspiration for the blue ghost of the Ouija board, Jack Johnson, the boxer, as well as a whole bunch of other notable cemetery monuments and statues. I'd come back. This is good. As always, happy Halloween. Wherever I come, I've had luck It's come my way Wherever I go, hard luck Is that it stays Good luck never stays a day A bad luck's always coming my way 